And now, the show that allows everyone to vent their spleen. It's Pacemaker, the program that puts the heart back into the health industry. Here's your host, Ryan McFallon. It's David and Goliath, but we're all David when it comes to fighting the healthcare industry. And this time, it's not a rock, it's our nuts in a sling. For thousands of years, people have treated themselves when they got sick. The wisdom was handed down from family to family, mother to daughter, father to son, and sometimes while inebriated, father to daughter. But nobody talked about it. Now we have HMOs, co-pays, a thousand forms to fill out, gastric bypasses, doctors that charge $30,000 to pry open your love cave with a speculum. Today on the show, from Beta Pharmaceuticals, Public Relations Director, Sheila Stafford. Hi, Ryan. Great to be here. I brought you samples of some breakthrough new drugs. You look like you really need them. Okay, thanks. Uh, and representing the largest HMO in the nation, Copay Health System CEO, Wilson Taylor. Senior. Ryan, it's a pleasure to be here to talk about taking the healthcare industry from a patient centric and business centric aggregated bell curve forward to the health model we're looking at in the 22nd century. All right. And finally, he's the founder of Homeopathic Center Down Home Medicine, author and self healing guru, the Down Home Medicine man himself, Waylon Mason. What? Uh, Waylon, I'm just saying welcome to the show. Uh, I didn't know. I didn't know. Okay, uh, let's start with you, Mason. What's wrong with the healthcare industry? Uh, that's just it. You said it. It's an industry. Industry. A trillion dollars. A trillion rotten deals and broken promises. Broken promises made to you and dirty needles. For what? I teach people, you know, stuff that, that, that only Indians and old people understand. Why are we sitting in a waiting room while some asshole, some limp ass nuts, plays golf, and makes a million dollars a year to scribble on little pieces of paper nobody can read. It's, it's, it, that's like they're writing secrets. It's a conspiracy. When we lived in the woods, my father taught me a lot about home medicine. After my mom died during childbirth, he let me burn the body. You can learn a lot from family. Let's get into the 21st century here. We really need to move beyond this negativity and hostility towards the pharmaceutical industry. We are leading robust, end-to-end, -end sustainable solutions to healthcare challenges in a viable and yet 100% patient-centric, care-focused, and responsible manner. Life is full of very complex chemical challenges. Beta Pharmaceuticals is there every step of the way, much more so than a bunch of hillbillies fighting progress and home cremating their mother. Well, what kind of... What are you, that's like being a corporate slut. Well, you don't know you are where you are. Well, really, life is a challenge. And if you could swallow a magic pill every day and not worry about that challenge, wouldn't you? We all would. Some of us are. Take, for instance, our best-selling symptomatic postural tension reliever, Comanex. Life is stressful. Up the dose. And with increased dosage, people will see an inverse reduction in problems. It's science, really. Life is stressful, and the reason it's stressful is that the consumer is forced to pay pharmaceutical companies like yours exorbitant fees to cover these prescriptions and CEO bonuses. HMOs like mine are trying to save your life, and Little Miss Drug Company here sashays into the doctor's office, flashes her perky bazookas, and the next thing you know, the doctor's prescribing heavy sedatives for every splinter or rash. And who gets to pay for this? The insurance companies, which we are obliged to mark up and pass on to you in denied coverage claims. It breaks my heart. There's just, there's just too many pills, man. It's making our immune systems weak. My mom was a, was a, was a visionary and a, and a helper, you know, and she left me in dirty diapers all day. And now I have a super goddamn immune system. I can lick the floor under a truck stop urinal and it don't affect me a bit. And sometimes I do, for cash or whatever. That's the problem. Let's stop blaming the HMOs because because you can't see a doctor. Don't blame Profits or Nixon because you've got bad coverage. Bottom line, don't blame me because you're a loser. Not my fault, buddy. And the last thing we need on Earth is socialized medicine. Jeesh. Can you imagine the chaos if everyone was able to see a doctor and didn't have to fill out reams of paperwork before they were denied a life-saving surgery because it costs money? It would be anarchy. There'd be lines for bread, and we'd all be speaking Russian or Cuban, and 
People would die. People are already dying because of paperwork and lack of coverage and their failure to understand the small print. <laughs> okay, Lenin, I understand. You want to live in a socialist utopia. Fair enough. Well, I don't. I want choices. I want access. I want buzzwords. I want dreams. I want the chance to look you in the eye and say, I've got it. You haven't. I bet you wish you paid more attention in school, you little shit. Then knee you in the nuts. That dream, that dream is America. And I tell you what, man, that's a dream hard-working people all over this country want. To see their lazy neighbors die because they didn't go to work and get a job and have health care. Time to remove the teat and say, dinner's over, baby. Go buy your own pair of tits. There's a great word, a German word, a powerful word, and that word is schadenfreude. And that word He's means... He's making up words to win an argument. Now that's hear me out here. Hear me out. Schadenfreude. Ich steigen. The word is schadenfreude, and that word means... Fuck you, loser. Fuck you. It's the American dream. Yes, I want to cuddle. I want to cuddle your wife while you're going bankrupt, chump. And that means you, Lefty. Okay, okay. Look, uh, this is getting out of hand. Can we get back on the topic, please? Oh, you can have my you. wife. I don't care. Thank you so much. I came here to talk about how our company, Beta Pharmaceuticals, has pioneered revolutions in pediatric care. It's a pill called Amphetorate that keeps kids quiet for hours. It's yellow. That means it makes you happy. Like in our animated commercials when frowns turn to smiles. It's also good if you ever feel self-conscious or awkward or awake. Oh, great, because I wanted to sleep till I finally died. Okay, but Mason, I, I thought you were all about homeopathic care. You know, natural solutions to people's problems. You really talk like that? Hey, you know what, man? Don't stress me out. I am the homeo and the pathic together. You need to take a daily examination. A really thorough inspection of your bowel movements. Get a fork, go through it, sift around, Ew. excavate. It's really fascinating. It's Nothing more fascinating. People come to me and they say, I don't feel so good. I tell them, well, save your eliminations for a week and bring them in a box. I can tell you what's wrong in a second. Now, this pharmaceutical lady is really nice with her little bubble tits and would make a fine receptacle for my DNA juice. <sighs> and that's the only reason people listen to her. But listen, you don't need a pill for everything and barely for anything. Okay, uh, Mason brings up a good point. Thank this you. This brings us to the topic of pre-existing conditions. Should you be denied insurance if you have one? Absolutely! As an HMO, we want people to be healthy. Don't go to the doctor, don't get sick, pay your premiums on time, and everyone's happy. Why would we want to sign up sick people? If we were a sports team and we signed up sick players, people would be furious. Our company has some fantastic athletic enhancement compounds in the works. One will double both your RBIs and your girth. This blame the HMOs mentality isn't rational. If you're sick, why don't you harass someone who can do something about it like God instead of calling and harassing our call center workers? Health, Ryan. My wife and I have a six-bedroom villa on the ocean in the Caribbean that we bring other couples to for healthy adventures. It's really all about health. Some whales are into gay sex. Exactly. Look at how they swim. It, thank you. Life makes no sense when fish are gay. Back to pre-existing conditions. If your hip hurts, you should probably kill yourself. It's all over if you fall down and break a hip. Don't burden society or my bonus because you fell down. We mustn't become a nation of hypochondriacs. Just because you have insurance, why use it? Why should we pay just because we said we would? Because you said you would. What do you matter anyway? As a nation, we have to move forward. And we are obsessing about our health care system. I mean, come on! America fucking rules. We've got to conquer space and fight the war on terror. And you people are worrying about a stiff hip? Please die. Hey, did you know on the space station they have to drink their own piss? Goodness gracious. I, you know, I can't understand. Come on, what saying. is wrong with that? That's an interesting thing to say. I'm talking about interesting. All you people want to talk about is money and co-payments and stuff. And I, I just talked about swilling piss. Disgusting. Steaming piss. Well, what is wrong with you people, man? No wonder you get sick. So pen up. Y'all need a good enema or, you're, or you might explode. That's another thing we haven't talked about. Uh, Ryan, we ain't talked about it. Y euthanasia. Why, why are they all prostitutes? Why, 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 why is everyone staring at me?
I'm going to bring this back to topic. Uh, you know, speaking of foreign countries, we really need to step up the war on drugs in this country. Now, that's a good point. What do you mean by that? Well, I'm talking about these criminals, these geezer criminals who smuggle drugs over the border so people can get them at a cheap rate and not pay a fair market price that we control. Hard medication, my ass. Well, uh, Sheila, a lot of people can't afford your drugs through the conventional channels, and they're forced to buy them on the black market. Well, boo-hoo! Boo-hoo! <laughs> Save your money. Stop buying silly things like lottery tickets, pickup trucks, or food. We have pills that can save your life, and you're whining about the cost? It makes me want to throw up. People have to take responsibility. I mean, just the other day, this woman began to freak out in front of me and clutch her chest. So I did the responsible thing. I walked away. Yes, I work in the health industry. Yes, I had a purse full of life-saving heart drug samples, but I did not know if this woman had insurance. I did not know if she was going to sue me. So I did the responsible thing, and I left it to the professionals. Wow. Did you even call 911? I left that to the professionals as well. Well, uh, what happened to this poor woman? Well, she died. But she learned a very valuable lesson. First off, you wouldn't be having a heart attack in the street if you had gone to the doctor the day before and requested a prescription for a pill you saw on a TV commercial but don't know what it does. What it does is irrelevant. Ask your doctor for it. My mother. My mother had a great home remedy. Home from the home for heart problems. A few ordinary household items. You'll find them under the sink. Mixed together, drink problems solved. No bureaucracy. It's like my dad. I remember him telling me, son... Diabetes is a lie. And he was in great shape because he hopped around on one leg a lot. Lemons to lemonade. Okay, I understand what you're saying. Now, but some people say, and when I say some people, I mean our producers. Some people say, why are HMOs making record profits while our economy is in recession? And why are the people paying more for health care than any other country? What do you want us to do? Go out of business? Listen, it's easy. Invest. Then when our share prices go up because of the, uh, listen to this bit, responsible way. Yes, responsible way we have run our business, including sensible maintaining of lots of friends on Capitol Hill. You'll see the upside. And you want to complain because we're doing so well? What's your problem? You're still alive to moan and groan about how horrible our health care is. Exactly. Pharmaceutical company profits aren't the problem. They're the solution. We need that money to fly doctors to golf retreats in the Caribbean. Oh, man. We are literally saving communities out there. In the old days, it was all about fishing and smoking pot. But now it's all about golf courses and uh, other cultural things like that. <laughs> All because of the money that has moved into health care. Do you know how much a lab monkey costs? And you end up stoning them to the tits on exciting new breakthroughs in medical science so much that they drop like flies left and right from the sheer joy. Progress ain't cheap, and you worry about costs? Leeches cure erectile dysfunction. I, I, I use them all the time. Okay, another good point by Mr. Mason, but let's Thank get to you. our next topic. Uh, should we go natural in our health care? Definitely. And we're happy to cover everything as long as you reach your $10,000 deductible. Isn't that great? We cover all the expenses after you've spent $10,000. We are saving you money. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> I guess your pills ain't working, lady. Well, you know, uh, let me tell you, the fact is, and it's a fact, drugs are killing us, man. You people are heading towards the dark ages. Up until the 1950s, this country was sick, diseased with worry. We helped usher in change with drugs perfect for an America coping with anxiety due to the civil rights movement. You guys want to take us back to home medicine? Please. You will kill people with your nonsense. The fact is, the only thing that makes people better is drugs. Not hokum pokum, not shitting in a bag and sleeping with my dad. Narcotics are what matters. Drugs. They work. <laughs> Trust me. I've been on them for years. What works? Drugs are hokum pokum. Yeah, that's hokum pokum. I'm telling you the truth. No one knows what officially is hokum pokum. And that's a fact. What works is a fully integrated spreadsheet pyramid with diagnostics at the center and patient recovery being at the top, which it always is with us here at Copay Insurance. What matters is holistics and getting well from psilocybin, 
Colonics. Does he have like a like a translator or something? Because I understand every fifth word he's saying. He's not... talking about holistics. Oh. Holistics, man. Drilling holes. It's an ancient form of medicine. If you had a headache, people run over to you and start drilling a hole in your head. If you had a heartburn, they drill a hole in your heart. If you practice witchcraft, they drown you or burn you just to check. It worked for centuries. He's talking more to rabbit, himself. Ra- parrot, rabbit. Talk about, oh, I want to make this much this year off a person who can't uh, breathe right. Uh, oh, I want to make that much off this doctor who who, 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 who who is ignoring the world. Okay, thank you, mate. Playing yes. golf. You are giving me a headache. Good. I can cure that. Come here. Yeah, what are you doing, Mr. Mason? Come here, come here. I'm getting the fuck away from you, smelly creep. No, this won't hurt a bit. My dad showed me. Come here, come here. Okay, come on, Mr. Mason. No, the drill fits clean, Let's put down the drill. Let's think about Reiki or something. What the hell are you talking about? Please stop. Oh, you calm the fuck down or the pitch bitch gets it. That's enough, Mr. Mason. I'm a good person. You ain't no good person. You ain't even a person, man. I got some free samples. Yeah, that's all you are is a vending machine of samples. Just don't trepanate me, please. I'll I'll pay you. Man, you, you think I want your goddamn blood money? I'm going to free mankind of drugs that cost money. No. Or that you can't grow or find on shit. No. Okay. No, okay, listen no, to what no, I'm calm saying. Calm down. It's I think you. we've had enough. It's, it's you're the insurance off. guy. One of you gets drilled, I ain't taking no for an inch. Please leave me out of this. She's the one with the headache. I respect alternative therapies. They give false hope. Are you kidding? I'm going to drill the smugness right out of your That's third good. eye. Hey, Impossible. Drill him. He's, he's let yeah. kids die. He refused a little girl a liver transplant. Nah. Oh. Oh, all right, you're she the one. Was you're too the one. risky to save. Nonsense. She was too risky to save. Risky for third quarter too earnings. Too risky to save. Drill gotta... her. She kept AIDS drugs out of the hands of poor people no, so I'm that her CEO you. could buy a plane. No, that's uh, a lie. Drill you. No, that's no, a lie. That's you. It was a boat, not a plane. It's a planes, boat. boats, corporations, no, drill him. He guys. All I'm drilling you so the stark smoke comes floating out of your skull uh, and the demons that have been controlling your life comes out of your skull. You think I'm messing around? You're not, I, I know you're not messing around. I tell you what, Mr. Mason. And just drill them both, please. But just hurry up, because that's about all the time we have for folks this week on The Pacemaker. No drill. No, no. Oh, hey, that's enough. Oh, that's oh, that's a geyser. A geyser of blood. Yeah, geyser, more blood. And now, for the seance. Hello, my name's Beatrix Fontaine from Hungary. In a past life, we were lovers. But then you already knew that, yes? Welcome to this seance. Believe, it's real. Everything you know is a lie, and the things you don't know are all true. Confused? Confusion is the same thing as knowledge, if you look at it backwards. This is the space-time continuum. I want you to be honest with yourself, just yourself and me. Was there ever a time you really wanted something and it didn't work out quite as you imagined? Or have you ever been in a relationship or professional situation that did not work out perfectly? Or possibly a feeling in your stomach that something is about to go wrong and then it does. I know what you're wondering, how does she know all these things about me? Well, the fact is, I have gift. A gift I learned roaming the streets of Eastern Europe, having lots of kids and earning money by dancing and playing the violin. You see, I can divine the magical powers of the stars and numbers like pi, read the wind and the tides to tell the future. I know skeptics scoff, but that is why they live such shallow and loveless lives and often end up dying. Whereas I'm immortal, more or less. Don't let science blind you with stem cells. There is a sixth sense and a third eye, cells you don't even know about, and I have both. Let's go to the spirit line. 212-360-2367. Hello? Hey, uh, Beatrix, I listened to your show on the old station um, before you got thrown off. I am so glad you're back. I wanted to ask you about my boyfriend. Don't tell me. I can feel a very powerful force. Even before you spoke, I knew you were a woman with relationship troubles. Is your boyfriend the source of the trouble? Well, he, uh... Don't tell me. Don't tell me. I'm hearing things from the spirit world. You are too loud. No. There it goes. It's going really quiet. What's your name, dearie? 
Don't tell me. It's a girl's name. It begins with a letter. It's not Rosa, is it? Uh, no, it's Martina. I knew it was not Rosa. This was the name of the peasant woman who stole my first child. Close, Martina. That was my next guess. The spirits were telling me both. No, wait. Martina, in a past life you were called Rosa. That's where that was coming from. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. You led a powerful army. You were a great woman. I see breastplates of gold shining as you march into battle. That's amazing. Really? Absolutely. You saved a civilization that were worshipped as a god. There are statues of you in Tanzania, covered in pigeon shit. There is a man with bad teeth and dirty hair who has just urinated on you. I think you always sort of knew this. No, wait. The spirit world is fading. I'm going to hazard a guess. Your great, great grandmother is dead. Yes? How did you know? I am just a mouthpiece, dearie. The spirits speak through me. She's telling me something. Something about diamonds and true love. Oh, that's great! Oh my gosh, I'm gonna marry a really rich guy! He's gonna wear lots of diamonds! You're kidding me! A rapper? Well, that's great. No, it's going faint. What? No! Have you got another credit card? The, the spirit world is telling me her first card bounced. No! Please, just tell me about true love and the guy with the diamonds. Is it Tony McTony? I'd love to, dearie, but spirit dollars are devalued these days due to the war on terror. Besides, immortal worlds need to earn some paper. Okay, it's Fleesa. 4135-9808-5665-1234. Expiration date, 1108. Great. We'll keep that very secure. Yes. The ghost world is telling me that's approved for up to $500. Now, $500 sounds like a lot of money, but apparently this true love guy has a lot of diamonds. I doubt $500 means a lot to him or to you once you meet him and fall in love. No, 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 no. It doesn't mean anything. Spend a lot. Go for it. How do I meet him? Wait. Wait. I'm getting something. You will meet him online. You should join an online dating service. Sleep with many men. Therein lies your prince. That's great! W but what about my current boyfriend? He's not for you. His name? Albert? Uh, no, it's Richard. Yes, yes, you're right. Thank you. He had a brother called Albert. A brother he doesn't know about. This explains why his life will be marred by failure. Oh, God. That's horrible! How can you tell? That's all we've got time for, dearie. What? No, 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 no! You're out of good luck. Enjoy the diamonds. Remember, please call. If you want to get on the seance, have a credit card handy. You can be happy. You will be. It's so close. A transaction away. 212-360-2367. Who's on the line? Hello, dearie. This is the seance. But then... We already knew it. Yeah, hi. I'm having trouble at work. I knew that. You're not a gondolier, are you? No. I knew that. I had a hunch. It was like a ghostly force telling me this man living in Liberty City does not propel a gondola for a living. Am I right? Yeah, Beatrix. It's not me, dearie. It's the gift. It was given to me as an STD at a pool hall in Bulgaria, and I've been rail thin and hallucinating ever since. But I am now just in the passageway between one world and the next, yelling answers back and forth. Do you understand? Probably not. Some of you will hear good news. Some of you will hear bad news. All of you will hear the truth. So the guys at work think it's ridiculous because I listen to your show. We'll be installing sheetrock and they'll be like, turn that dingy bitch off! The guys? There's three of them, isn't there? No, there's about 11 of them. I knew it! To ancient Egyptians, the number three was the number 11. In the same way as the French word for spirit also means avocado. Did you know that? No, I don't quite understand. I really have never been to Egypt or France. Please, don't bring science into it. Doubters doubt everything. Personally, I'd rather know. Which would you rather be, Bob? It is Bob, isn't it? No, it's Michael! Exactly. 
That was a trick question. You were named after Saint Michael. No, I was named after my uncle who died, Uncle Mike. I'm talking to him right now, Michael. He's visiting from the spirit world. He was a saint. He's telling me he's very proud of you. He's saying you're a great and powerful man, only you don't know it yet. He's saying, he's saying, he's saying the struggles you are going through at work are exactly the same struggles he went through when fighting the Moors. Uncle Mike fought the Moors? I thought he was in construction. He was a bit racist. He was, you're right. But before he was in construction, he fought the Moors on horseback. Wow! He rode a horse? But I thought Uncle Mike died of a heart attack real young because he was real fat. That's what you were told, Michael, to protect you from the truth. He and your mother loved each other very much. And you are the result of a very unique family union and bond that people don't talk about. Wait, your uncle is telling me something. Wait, wait, wait. He's... He's telling me you're... You're the chosen one. Oh, wow. Yes, and he's telling me you've got a great quest. Only he doesn't know what it is yet. He's telling me you should call my premium rate number every day until we can find out what it is. He's telling me it's very important you do this every day. You do that, Michael. Well... Michael, it's very important. He's telling me the future of the world depends on it. Wow! This is incredible! I'm just the vehicle. The cosmic bus. Like the buses on the dirty roads of Bulgaria where you can lay in the road and brain tourists. It's your life, Michael. Live it. If you take one thing away, take that. It's important. Wait. The spirit gate has closed. Please call the line. Don't let your future happen without knowing about it first, or it may just become your past. Think about that. This is the seance. Wow. It feels like Sunday morning all the time on Public Liberty Radio. Public radio that sips overpriced coffee and cries for the world. All the way to the left side of your radio dial. It's PLR. Public Radio. Liberty Radio. Okay, you are back. You have joined. Turn out the lights. Get to your quiet place. Then call. Join the seance. Hi, my name is Candy. I knew that, dearie. I was told. We made love in Mauritania once. I was a swan. Let me guess. Of course, it's not a real guess. It's forces beyond our comprehension speaking through me. But let me guess. You're a Virgo this time, right? No, a Gemini. That's what they told you. I know, I know. But you have Virgo rising. No, actually, I think I had Libra rising. I know, but I'm not looking at simplistic superficial astrology. <laughs> Anyone can do that. I'm looking deeper into the cosmos, behind Libra, tucked away next to the neutron star. To the left of Virgo too was the Virgin. It was also rising. And it is this conflict between the scales, the twins, and the dreaded virgin, and the tax collector. It is this conflict that is tearing you apart. This is why sometimes you feel deep melancholy and heart-piercing grief. And why you seek solace in strangers, right? I bet you did not know that. No, I thought it was because I had a troubled childhood. Of course you did. Your parents did not understand you. How could they, Candy? They tried, but I was... They were aliens. And you? You're an alien hunter who had her memory wiped. And you keep having a dream where an alien fetus crawls out of your stomach and poops. Only you can't remember it. That's the whole point. I'm speaking to the cosmos right now. Hello? Hello? It is telling me everything is going to be okay. As long as you buy and read my book very carefully. Will you do that? Sure. But wait. Nothing. Rather than waste decades into training and meditating to speak to the other side, you can now take a shortcut right out of your online bank account. Hold on. It's telling me something. It's telling your luck will change if you spread knowledge. Buy 20 copies of my book. It's a clear message I'm getting from the depths of a different dimension. Will you do that? Um... 
I'm sorry, we must have a bad connection. Interference with the spirit world happens. Are you ready to descend into the realms of Hades? I was there this morning. I have studied everything. Greece, Cyprus, Gipari, ancient religions, chaotic pasts, sex magic where you strangle the person afterwards. Fantastic! It answers really important questions. The number is 212360-2367. Hello, line four. You have five minutes. The meter is running. Yeah, Beatrix Fontaine? Tell me why I should have to pay for advice. It's insulting. If you've got a gift, you should share it for free. My, my. You've become quite a little firebrand since running that tavern in Krakow 500 years ago. Uh, um, really? Wait, wait, tell me. Yes, you're in the tavern. It is in Krakow. Yes, I am seeing it happen. You're wiping the bar with a rag and... Do you remember a fat man? I don't know. You and the fat man are having an argument in the tavern. Oh no! A woman leaves quickly, shouting. I'm seeing it very vividly as if it were happening right in front of me. He's screaming. You're screaming. I hate you. I hate you. It's in Polish, but the spirit world has translated it for me. Have you ever hated someone? Yeah. I knew this like the hand of my back. You have loved someone you hated. You have conflicting feelings. Oh no, you are holding the man in a headlock. You are enraged. Fucking A. Am I going to kill him? You are about to smash his head on the bar. Awesome. What next? Now you are holding his head in your hands. Now you are kissing him. What? Yes. You are kissing him with the tongue now. He is grabbing your long hair, shoving his tongue deep inside your mouth. You are really enjoying this. The passion is exploding. Your hand is reaching for his groin. Oh, God, no way. No fucking way. The abyss does not lie. Now he has his hand down your trousers. You are very engorged. Oh. You have done this before. Oh. You know it is wrong, but you cannot help yourself. Oh, my God, no. Oh, yes. You are about to take it from the big man now. Ugh, oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. I must turn the spirit world off. You have a girlfriend? Yes, yes I do. I, oh shit, this is awful. This of course I know. I ask the questions to eat up time. Listen, you will break up with her tonight. Tell her about the fat man and the tavern and the passion and his enormous hog 500 years ago. Tell her all of this is true. And if she no believe, tell her to call Beatrix Fontaine. Your time is up. The cosmic wind has blown you back into the moat where you swim in sewage of the time stream, yes? The mouth is a graveyard for many animals and their spirits sometimes want to talk. But if you want to talk, you need a credit card to talk. Hello, Darlene. Wow! You know my name! Of course, dearie. I have a connection. I dial up, authenticate with the spirit world, and spirit dollars go into the account. Then they go to an offshore spirit world where it's always warm. Wait, I am seeing two eyes. You had a teddy bear, or a doll, or a toy, or something when you were younger? It meant a lot to you, yes? No, yes, a teddy bear. I quite liked it. You carried this teddy bear around to show people where the bad woman touched you. I don't think so. No, you don't think so because you are living a terrible lie. Even you do not know. This is because you are a man. You are a man, and inside your spirit is very upset that you were circumcised, and you have been trying to go back to that day. This is absurd! I'm not a man! I have breasts! You are self-conscious about these breasts? Well, yeah. You see? You now see because I see. This is not absurd. It is absurd because it has not happened yet. Is tomorrow absurd? Do not scoff at the future. It will be your past today. Not tomorrow. You will be a man. I want you to enter an altered state tonight. And all will begin to come into focus. Go to a biker bar. Take some ecstasy. And all will become clear. Do not doubt me. I am licensed. But I wanted to ask about my baby and the... Ah, oh, 
I'm sorry. The spirit world is growing dark. Whether you are a child of the night, or running in a nocturnal circle, or even if men are around you in a circle right now, remember, I can read minds. I know you want to call me. The price is irrelevant. What is the price of knowing the future? Of understanding the past? Priceless. Sometimes telling your fortune will cost a fortune. This is Beatrix Fontaine, gifted mystic with a special gift. Blessings to you. See you in the spirit world or online at BeatrixFontaine.com. Bye-bye. From the heart of Liberty City, it's the Intelligent Agenda. Here's your host, Michael. Thank you. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you. Great show for you today. Yeah, Brandon Roberts is on the show because I'm sleeping with his publicist. Uh Uh-huh. It's true. Now, the whole country is talking about his campaign ads for state governor, where he calls his challenger a pedophile and brings the word harlot back into the modern lexicon. It's John Hunter, ladies and gentlemen. All right. All right. And 11-year-old super genius, Zachary Tyler. Give it up for Zachary. Okay, now... People say, Mike, what is this show about? Well, we're here to laugh, okay? And we're also here to cry because the only thing liberals run in this country is the TV networks. But seriously, it's a show all about keeping fascism at bay in its many forms, even in the changing room. It's a show about the human heart. It's a show in which we laugh at lots of conservatives and call them repressed. We've got everything, really. Thank you. It's a show in which we ponder how America got into such a mess and we realize we should blame all the people we don't like. And it's a show in which we yet again kneel over the great altar of American hypocrisy and start to suck. Yep, it's time for Intelligent Agenda. First up, he's the star of the film Flower Man and appears in the sitcom Family Interrupted, which is set in a women's clinic. You love him. I love him. The women love him. He's slept with most of you, I imagine. It's Brandon Roberts. Wow, Brandon, you look great. Hey, thanks. I I know. I really do. You know, it's great to be back on whatever show this is. This is great. Now, if you weren't a man of remarkable integrity, I'd say you had some work done there, Brandon. Nice t-shirt. Yeah, yeah, this t-shirt is part of our campaign. See, we're going to kill global warming once and for all, right? Yeah. Yeah, see, we're going to have a concert, get a lot of people together to really rally, you know, and feel the music and the message. And, And once you feel that, once you feel that... You'll, you'll want to buy the T-shirt and the program, the commemorative DVD we're making, the, the limited edition MP3 player. And, and once we join together, all of us join together, global warming will end, man. Global warming will end. I mean, like, I, I'm no scientist, okay? But sometimes these scientists, they, they just make things confusing. It takes actors and musicians to explain important issues, you know? I mean, this is about intelligent people like me making a difference at a... Uh, ground level. Wow, that sounds great, Brandon. I don't know if it's just me, but you've been acting in a movie, it seems like, what, every every three months? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you know what? Being an actor, it's really hard. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you know, I've got to say somebody else's words and then go sit in a trailer. Mm. You know, people don't realize the stress of Vinewood relationships. Uh, working long hours for sometimes a week straight. You know, the pressure of getting paid $20 million to read lines written by someone who makes a few hundred dollars sleeping with a lot of women mm. uh, it's tough I, I mean I know I'm fortunate and, and I'm also humble I really am uh, it's complicated it's difficult to wrap your brain around it's kind of like one of those Chinese symbols but you know some days I get hand release while doing Tai Chi on the beach and the next day uh, I wear glasses and talk about suffering uh, I'm not gay by the way uh, well, uh, why don't we just take a call then? Okay. Yeah, Brandon. Hey, I'm a big fan of your work, man. How you pretend to be other people and then spend all the rest of your time telling ordinary folk how to live, it really inspires me. Um, I'm a pathological liar. Yeah, yeah. W- whenever there's a natural disaster or anything, I try to show up and help make a point with photo ops how, how the government is really letting people down. You know, I have more money and a bigger soul, and my goal in life is to prove it to everyone. You know, do some opera, drink some 
some pomegranate juice. People don't have enough antioxidants. Uh, worry about the prison industrial complex. Worry about the military industrial complex. The, the industrial industrial complex. The inferiority complex. Obesity. Fair trade gourmet coffee. China. Uh, there are a lot of things being an actor has made me an expert on. I understand pain. I understand people's pain. I am pain. Wow, you are you are wound up, Brandon. Are, are you high? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you bet I am, man. You bet I am. I am high on life, and my deity just keeps running out of money and needs a hefty part of my income. Can you get me on the internet? Get me on the internet, because uh, people really need to feel my love. I've got a blog, okay? I, I've got to write this down. Not, I'm not part of a cult or anything, okay? This is a real religion, just like all the other ones, just like all that. So don't be so prejudiced. Hey, Kiflam, right? Right, okay. Well, let's take another call for Brandon Roberts. Okay. Hey, Brandon, I really like you in all those situation comedies, like... Like when you go back to elementary school as an adult and sleep with your mother by mistake, it's funny as shit. But I have to say, I'm tired of all this green shit. These environmentalists haven't done us any favors. It's why all our food comes from China now. China's gonna take us over. Exactly, exactly. See, that's exactly the, the point I'm trying to make. It's what they don't want you to know. That's why I drive a hybrid SUV to the organic market across town to buy imported organic New Agent mushrooms that have been flown in burning tons of pollutants killing the pollutants so they can't pollute anymore see that's what makes me an environmentalist i understand the science i know how it works i got taught it in drama school see i only drink bottled water that's shipped from samoa instead of pumped from a well across town because everything here it's just so dirty. It, it, it's a lot like my new film. There's a, a chase scene on the Los Santos freeway and a huge monkey, some dinosaurs who are trapped in amber. It's very original. It, it's a nice, quiet character piece. Wow, that sounds great, Brandon. Now, let, let's take it? a quick break. We're going to be back with more of Brandon Roberts and gubernatorial candidate John Hunter. PLR reminds you, consumer-driven culture is killing our democracy. Buy yourself a hybrid, a solar panel, and a composting toilet, and set yourself free. This is PLR, Public Liberty Radio. We return to the Intelligent Agenda. Okay, we're back on the Intelligent Agenda with me, Mike Riley. Let's bring out our next guest. Uh, Brandon, can you uh, hang out for a while? You got it, All right, man. scooch on over the couch there. All right, uh, next up, he's an actor as well, but has gotten into politics by running for governor of our state. You may have seen the TV commercials for John Hunter where he accuses Michael Graves of all kinds of nasty things. Well, here he is, John Hunter. <laughs> wow! Oh, thank you. I mean, that's, that's really wonderful. Wow, you look great, oh, John. Thank you, thanks. How's the campaign going? Mike, it's just fantastic. We're making a difference by giving the networks millions of dollars to run campaign ads. It's democracy at a grassroots level. Fundraising has gone really well. I haven't sold myself out at all. I've learned a lot being an actor, you know, on the set during years of bit parts. I want to bring the reality of TV dramas from the lots of Vinewood to our state. Wow, look at that. The phones are exploding. Line three, Sarah. Hi, Mike. I'm a huge fan and a committed swinger. Maybe you'd like to come to one of our parties. Hi, Brandon. I love that art house film you made when you painted a picture with your junk. John, I'm a concerned parrot. How are you going to help me make the world safer for my kids? Well, Sarah, if you vote for me, things will change. That's a relief. There's a lot that I'm doing to help parents. I mean, now, now you take the internet. What happens when kids can post on the internet on their own pages? Oh, like myroomonline.net. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah I, I don't understand it. I come from a different generation. When it was okay to carpet bomb first and ask questions later. But people have to understand that the internet is a series of tubes and strange men want to put their privates in the other side of that tube and right into your child's bedroom. As a conservative liberal, I feel it's my duty to try it. Buy a financial stake in it and then regulate it. 
It's a win-win. And the best bit is we can all feel guilty together. Wow, let's go back to the phones then. Steve, Steve, you're on Intelligent Agenda. Hi, Mr. Hunter. I really enjoy your campaign commercials. It's the best part of election season. The 18 months of attack ads where you have no clue what's going on, and you learn to hate everyone. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. I was hoping you could do something about these air shows. Why do planes have to fly so close together over a crowd of people? Oh boy, there's a jet farting smoke. Big deal! It's polluting the atmosphere. People are actually shocked when these planes crash. Gee, you're doing Mach 2 with your wings an inch apart. Air shows suck ass. Now safety is one of the main parts of my campaign. We've had enough of these dividers. We want the whole enchilada to come together as a nation because we all like Mexican food. Now let's stop big government running things for the little guy. I want to make sure everyone has access to opportunities they can afford. It's the American way. It's all in my best-selling campaign book. Next uh, caller, you're on with John Hunter. Uh, and Brandon Roberts. Oh, yeah, of course, uh, Brandon Roberts. Hello, Jay. Yeah, Mr. Hunter, I have a question. What happens when dogs and cats can drive? Now, that's one of the things we need to focus on in this country. Education. And if I'm elected governor, at least one state will have its priorities straight. Unfortunately, our schools focus on academics, while schools in the South focus on nothing but football and procreating. We need to change the budgets to break the teachers' unions and buy uniforms, balls, and then the books, if we can afford them. I learned a lot playing the part of a maverick coach in a TV movie about football. Maybe what we need is a good old-fashioned peasant mob. Exactly. Exactly. Freedom within reasons. Responsible government taking away choices people don't need. Right now, what we have is a war on science. The FDA is denying access to a new drug that causes super fertility. Can you imagine the beauty and joy of God's gift as your home will become a whelping box and your zygotes mutate and quadruple? Mother Nature may have told you not to have children, but Mother Nature can be overruled, just like the current administration. All righty, next caller. Hi there, Linda. Yes, hi. I'm a first-time caller and a committed liberal. I say fuck the conservatives. They're all square, and, and we should burn them. Mr. Hunter, I hope you win this election and do something about the health care industry. Like these ultrasounds. They send radio waves to my brain as a child. Um, um, that's why I killed my mom. You see, the health care industry is failing millions of Americans. We've overregulated the insurance companies so they can't turn a healthy profit. The net result is that millions of hardworking Americans who invested in these companies are losing money. It's a national disgrace. Next caller. Yeah, I'm sick of these illegal immigrants. America should be for people like me. We invented freedom. Now, immigration reform is very important. As I say in my campaign blog, it is not hate. It's patriotism bottled up. It's important that our children see us taking xenophobia seriously. Otherwise, who are they going to learn from? Speaking of kids, we should take a quick break and get our next guest out here. Get this. He's 11, and he's a super genius. Back after this. Public Liberty Radio. Free radio. Free of interesting content. Just blather. No, boring burnout. Blathering between shows. This is PLR. Let's get back to Intelligent Agenda. And now, back to the Intelligent Agenda. Okay, we're back on Intelligent Agenda. I'm Mike Riley. I'm sure you've heard about our next guest on the news. He's 11, and he's a genius. He's Zachary Tyler, National Spelling Bee Champion a couple of years back, also a grandmaster at chess. He's written the great American novel, and now he's about to solve hunger. Great to have you on the show. Greetings. Now, Zachary, you are a great example of liberal parenting. Your parents raised you in a commune. Yes, it was very disappointing. My parents were weak and feeble people. I don't miss them. I put myself up for adoption after they got divorced. I play a divorced dad in my new movie. It's got a talking car and a flesh-eating disease that threatens mankind, but <laughs> I've got great abs in it. It's a real character piece. Okay, uh, Zach, uh, you've been educated in a public school. Well, sort of. I learned to despise the common 
heard in a public school. So then I learned about the world by being homeschooled by a friendly teacher. I think it's important we give everyone access to homeschooling. I, I don't know about that. I, I think community is very important. Yeah, I agree. I was really popular at school. It was great training for life because uh, I'm real popular now. Okay, now, now, Zach, tell us about the plan to end hunger. Well, it's quite simple, really. Almost facile. I looked at hunger as a supply and demand problem. Too many hungry people. Simple. Rather than reducing the number of hungry people, simply reduce the number of people using involuntary euthanasia for the weak and unfortunate and turn them into compost for our crops. It's simple. You want to kill people to reduce hunger? Absolutely. It's brilliant. It's barbaric. I blame video games. They're teaching our kids to solve hunger by slaughtering the weak. We should only slaughter the weak to win wars and sell guns to unjust governments we keep in power. I despise the government. The government's like the paparazzi, you know? They follow you around, and then when you mess up, they are on you, man. They are on you with a zoom lens. My blog talks all about it. You can go to a brand new... Okay, okay. Where's the consensus here? I think we've all reached a consensus, Mike. The group seems to be agreeing that, well, under my plan, you'd be one of the first people we eliminated. <laughs> Shut up, you tiny little freak! A nasty little right-wing bully! I bet you've never even gotten laid. Oh, I have. I have. Lots of times. Yeah. <laughs> Mostly by girls. Uh, sometimes with uh, underage chicks. Oh, but you're there's sick, no pick young man. You're sick. Stop looking at me strangely. I'm tempted to beat a lesson into you, young man. I imagine you are, you catamite. Come here. I'm going to give you the spanking of your life, you little dork. You're going to learn some respect. No, please. Come please. here, you. No, Come no. no. Stop wiggling no. around so much. You're a pedo. Ow. You're not even old enough to see them. How do you know they suck? Hey, Mike! Mike! How's my six-pack look? Huh? Hey, can we talk about global warming um, and my t-shirts? Should we make them Yeah, no, no, no. no. I think we're done. I think that's all we have time for on uh, Intelligent Agenda. Ow! Ow! Until next time, stay liberal. Kiflam, man. Kiflam. Shut up.